Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. Gulliver's Travels was published anonymously in 1726 under the title Travels into Several Remote Nations of the World. Gulliver's Travels is a first-person narrative and it is told from the point of view of one Mr. Lemuel Gulliver who is a surgeon and sea captain and he is a person who visits remote regions of the world and describes four adventures in this book. Sir. In the first book, Gulliver is the only survivor of a shipwreck. He swims to a place known as Lilliput where he is tied up by people who are less than 6 inches that is 15 centimeters tall. He is then taken to the capital city and eventually released. The Lilliputians' small size mirrors their small-mindedness. They indulge in ridiculous customs and petty debates. Political affiliations, for example, are divided between men who wear high-heeled shoes, symbolic of the Tories, and those who wear low-heeled shoes, representing the Whigs. And court positions are filled by those who are best at rope dancing. Gulliver is asked to help defend Lilliput against the empire of Bluefisco with which Lilliput has at war over which end of an egg should be broken. This being a matter of religious doctrine. Gulliver captures Bluefisco's naval fleet thus preventing an invasion but declines to accept the emperor of Lilliput in conquering Bluefisco. Later Gulliver extinguishes a fire in the royal palace by urinating on it. Eventually, he falls out of favor and is sentenced to be blinded and starved. So, he flees to Blufisco, where he finds a normal-sized boat and is thus able to return to England. His second voyage takes him to Brobdingnag, which is inhabited by a race of giants. A farm worker finds Gulliver and delivers him to the farm owner. The farmer begins exhibiting Gulliver for money and the farmer's young daughter, Glumdar Klitsch takes care of him. One day, the queen orders a farmer to bring Gulliver to her and she purchases Gulliver. He becomes a favorite at court. Though the king reacts with contempt when Gulliver recounts the splendid achievements of his own civilization, the king responds to Gulliver's descriptions of the government and history of England by concluding that the English must be a race of odious vermin. Gulliver offers to make gunpowder and cannon for the king, but the king is horrified by the thought of such weaponry. Eventually, Gulliver is picked up by an eagle and then rescued at sea by people of his own size. In his third voyage, he is set adrift by pirates and eventually ends up on the flying island of Laputa. The people of Laputa all have one eye pointing inward and the other upward and they are so lost in thought that they must be reminded to pay attention to the world around them. Though they are greatly concerned with mathematics and with music, they have no practical applications for their learning. Laputa is the home of the king of Balni Barbari, the continent below. Gulliver is permitted to leave the island and visit Lagada, Lagado, the capital city of Balni Barbari. He finds the farm fields in ruin and the people living in apparent squalor. Gulliver's host explains that the inhabitants follow the prescriptions of a learned academy in the city where the scientists undertake such wholly impractical projects as extracting sunbeams from cucumbers. Later, Gulliver visits Glubdubdrip, the island of sorcerers, and there he speaks with great men of the past and learns from them the lies of history. In the kingdom of Lugnak, he meets the Strudbrugs, who are immortal but age as though they are mortal and are thus miserable. From Lugnak, he is able to sail to Japan and thence back to England. In his fourth visit, Gulliver visits the land of the Hoyunums, a race of intelligent horses who are cleaner and more rational, communal and benevolent than the brutish, filthy, greedy and degenerate hemorrhoid race called Yahoos some of whom they have tamed, an ironic twist on the human-beast relationship. The Hainanims are very curious about Gulliver, who seems to be both a Yahoo and civilized. But after Gulliver describes his country and his history to the master, 
Hainanam. The Hainanam concludes that the people of England are not more reasonable than the Yahoos. At last it is decided that Gulliver must leave the Hainanam, sir. Gulliver then returns to England and so disgusted with humanity that he avoids his family and buys houses and converses with them instead. And here ends the uh, novel. If you have anything more to add on to what I've said, please write it in the comment box. Like the video, share it with your friends. And if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe and support. Thank you.